Alright folks, so in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about Nano VNAs and uh, some software called Nano VNA Saver. In a previous video I was able to use the Nano VNA to do some sweeps of some frequency bands and um, I was able to, to display some SWR charts and some Smith charts and I did that when I was testing the resonance and the performance of these antennas on specific frequencies. And some folks were asking me, well, hey Abe, how did you do that? And so I decided to put this video together for them. Uh, let's take a quick look here, and you can see what the software looks like. Um, if you saw my previous video, you would have seen it there as well. And we're going to walk through some basic configurations, some gotchas that uh, you may encounter, and really just give a brief overview of how to do this. I also wanted to point out that I did a video a while back on the Nano VNA called the Nano VNA Introduction, uh, something along those lines, and I'll link that below. And you'll be able to watch that to get a better understanding of what this hardware is and how you can work it. Before we get started, I did want to say that if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, share it somewhere on social media. It does a lot to help uh, the video become more discoverable so other people like you can find the content. And it helps me out a little bit too. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have the Nano VNA that we're going to use in this video. And I just wanted to do a very brief overview of this hardware and how it ships. The one I ordered came in this plastic case and it came with a couple of peripherals. So the first thing is it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable and you use this to connect the device to your computer. It's pretty self-explanatory. And it also came with two coax cables with SMA uh, male connectors on them. And you can use these to attach antennas or you can use them to measure throughput on the Nano VNA. It also came with these three calibration standards used to calibrate the Nano VNA. This is an open standard. This would be a short standard. And then this would be a 50 ohm load. There you go. When doing a calibration, you gently connect these to the S11 port on the Nano VNA. Now you do what's called a SOLT calibration for short, open, load, and through. And for the through, you connect the coax from the S11 connection to the S21 connection. The antenna that we're going to use in this video is the Edfong DBJ-2 roll-up J-pole antenna. You can pick this up for 34 bucks, and it's one of the best antennas that I've ever bought. It's resonant on 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. You can also buy a commercial version that I believe is more resonant on some of the commercial frequencies. In taking a look at this, you can also add a 6 foot BNC uh, male to BNC female custom cable, and uh, I would order that as well as an adapter. This works great for connecting uh, to handhelds in the field, or you can even use it as a uh, home base station antenna for UHF and VHF. Fantastic antenna. Can't say enough nice things about it. All of these links will be shared in the description below. Now this is where you can get a copy of the Nano VNA uh, Saver software. It's an open source project and it's hosted on GitHub. This link will give you some information about installing the application, running the application. Uh, you can see here that the Windows binaries are stored on a different page. So I just want to include that. When you scroll down, you want to pick the executable for version 0.2.2.1. And that's the version that we installed on this PC. There's also a version for Linux and there's a version for Mac OS with installation instructions on the web page. I have done the installation for Linux and it works fine. I have not done the installation for Mac OS yet. There's some other information on here about using the software, calibration, and some important links below that would help you learn a little bit more about using this particular piece of software. Okay, so here we are in the Nano VNA Saver software. And the first thing I want to do is direct your attention down to the lower left hand corner. And uh, here's some information down here where you can set your reference sweep. Uh, there's some stuff around serial port control. Um, right here is a rescan button, and if I click that, it will actually scan my computer to see if there's a Nano VNA connected, and it automatically detects my serial port. In the event that this doesn't happen, what you can do is you can open up your device manager and check your common LPT ports. Here's a screenshot of that to make it easy, just in case you need to do that. And then you can pick this drop-down menu and select the appropriate port should the scan feature not work. But I've never had it not work. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to click connect to nano VNA. Oh, by the way, my nano VNA is connected to the computer and it is also connected to the antenna. And when I do that, uh, what it does is immediately does a sweep starting at uh, 50 kilohertz and going all the way up to 900 megahertz. But um, we're going to get a little bit more focused on a couple of the bands and we're going to cover that. Okay, so before I get a little too far ahead of myself, let's go ahead and calibrate our nano VNA. So coming back over here into the lower left hand corner, there is a button for calibration. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click that. And then I get a calibration dialog window. This calibration dialog window lets me know that currently my device is uncalibrated. So we're going to do what's called a SALT calibration, or almost a SALT calibration. And you do this, uh, it's called a short open load, then you can do an isolation, isolation and then a through test. The isolation and the through test connect your S11 port to your S22 port, S21 port, um, and allow you to test uh, throughput on the um, on the Nano VNA. We're not going to need to do that in order to test our antenna. Sometimes it's referred to as a device under test or a DUT. We're going to use the calibration assistant, which is kind of like a wizard to help you get through calibrating your device. Uh, for this particular software. Now you can calibrate manually, but it's a little bit more difficult, and I would recommend using the Calibration Assistant. When you click on the Calibration Assistant button, you get a dialog box that tells you a little bit about the process that you're going to go through, and it tells you that you don't have to do the through connector if you don't want to. Anyhow, we're going to click OK. And what it asks is to please connect the short standard to port 0 of the Nano VNA, or your S11 port and uh, connect or click OK when you're done. I've already connected the short standard, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. And it's going to run through the calibration process. And when it's done, it comes back and it asks me to go ahead and put the open standard on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to connect this open standard. OK, with the open standard connected, I'm going to click the OK button. And it's going to continue calibrating. And now it's going to ask for us to connect the, the load standard. Uh, the 50 ohm load and that's right here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect that right now with the load standard connected I'm going to click OK and now that we're done and it's asking me if I want to continue with the two port calibration and I don't want to so I'm just going to go ahead and pick apply to apply my configuration right now with this done I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exit out of this screen and I'm going to connect my antenna Okay, now that the antenna is connected, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at our display setup. Over here on the lower left hand corner of the screen, you can see information for your reference sweep and then down at the bottom you can see your display setup button. Let's go ahead and click that. Now we're going to get some display settings in the center of the screen. And when you take a look here, there's a couple of different things to take note of. One of those is that your return loss is typically shown as negative but you can click positive and it reverses that. So for me it's a little bit easier to see the dips where my antenna might be more resonant if I look at it from a negative standpoint. So I leave it on negative. Next thing is I can click this uh, checkbox here to remove the lines from the charts. And uh, you can see that on that chart you have the markers, not the entire line. I like to show the line. It makes it a little bit easier for me to read. Uh, I can also enable dark mode and I typically don't do this because for me I don't see the value in it. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to read and then I would have to likely adjust the, uh, the point size and the line thickness and you can see that down here. Now I can change the colors for my sweep, my secondary sweep, reference or second reference. Um, I leave them as the defaults and I typically leave dark mode off. It just works for me. Uh, we covered down here where you can adjust the point size, line thickness and marker size. You can show your markers as numbers, um, or you can show them as filled markers. I just leave it at filled markers. Now for your display charts, let's go ahead and move this over. You have uh, a bunch of different options here where you can pick different things to measure. Um, I typically leave mine on uh, Viswar or VSWR, and uh, I leave a Smith chart at the bottom and then return loss in the upper corner. But you can go through and you can add up to uh, as many as six, char six charts if that's what you wish to do. Um, for me, uh, in the work that I'm doing, it's not necessary. 
Over here, we can add markers. And if I click this Add button, then you see another one added over here on the left-hand side. And we'll get into why you would want to use markers in a couple of minutes. Um, and then I can just click Remove, and it will remove the marker that I just added. And then over here, I can click Settings, and I can change the content that you see over here under your marker data. I've just used the defaults and have had no problems with that. But again, I'm not doing an in-depth analysis. Over here under chart colors, you can do things like change uh, or use custom chart colors. Again, as I mentioned, I, I, don't, I don't really see a need to do that, so I don't. I can change my font size. And then this is pretty handy where you can show bands. I have that turned on now. Uh, you can turn it off, and then you can see in this return loss chart, the bands disappeared. Now, those bands are typically the amateur radio spectrum bands. And what's important to notice is that for this default uh, configuration in the software, it's not ITU2 or North America um, compliant, so you have to do some adjustments there. So let me just go ahead and click on Manage Bands, and then I get this data table. And what I had to do is click Add a Row, and here you can see you can just add a row in with the, the name of the band, your start uh, frequency, and your end frequency. And I, did I had to do that because um, 1.25 was not included. I also had to adjust the bands for 70 centimeters and 2 meters as they were not uh, compliant with U.S. regulations. You can hit reset bands and that will take them back to the default configuration uh, in case you edit something incorrectly. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. The other thing is, is that for chart bands you can change the color there. So like uh, for example we might just want to make them blue and then you can see on the charts that the bands have turned blue. It makes them a little bit easier to read. And that's going to cover our display settings. Okay, now we're going to take a look at running a sweep. And what we're going to do is go up to the upper left-hand corner and take a look at our sweep control. And uh, just when you start it up, it runs from 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz. And that's a bigger sweep than we want. Now you can go ahead and you can click in these, uh, these dialog boxes and you can type in your own frequencies. So let's just put in... 140 megahertz to let's go to 455 megahertz and then I can come down here to the sweep button and then I can click that and the sweep runs now over here on the charts I can see uh, where my antenna is most resonant I would not expect it to be resonant here in the uh, 220 band or 1.25 meters, uh, but I would expect it to be resonant over on the ends in the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter given it's a dual band uh, antenna. And that's the two bands that it's dual band for. We also have the capability to come over here and click on sweep settings. And then when you click on sweep settings, you get a dialog box in the center of the screen you can create and save a particular sweep configuration. So here, let's just call this sweep test. I'm going to go down to the set button and I'm going to click that. And once I do, you can see that the charts have changed to test. I can do a single sweep, which just runs through one time, or I can do continuous where it sweeps, 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 and goes on and on until you stop. And then you can do an average sweep. And then here's the number of measurements to average, and this means it would do three sweeps, and then it would average the totals. Uh, down here at the bottom, it's pre-configured to sweep the bands, and we took a look earlier at how you can add your bands or modify the bands that exist. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a two-meter sweep. So I go ahead and I select that, and then I can pad band limits. And I like to do a 25% pad when I do an individual band. That way I can see the edges and I can see maybe there's a trend or maybe where the antenna is resonant outside of band. And then I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to pick set band sweep. Click the X to close that out. And then I'm going to go back over to uh, my sweep control and I'm going to hit the sweep button. And that sweep is going to run. So here you can see for the 2 meter band, um, I'm well underneath uh, a 1.5 SWR. So at the, at the entry of the band, it looks like I'm at 1.447. At the exit of the band, I'm right at 1.576, so a little bit over 1.15. And then my most resonant point is down here at 1.45520. Now, we talked a little bit before about adding markers. So I want to come over here, and I want to go ahead and I want to add a marker for 
to zero. And you can see back on this chart uh, where um, the SWR is. And then I can also come up here and read data off of marker one. And then down here, I can take a look at my, uh, my Smith chart and see that um, I'm more capacitive than inductive. But I click here and I can see that I'm pretty close to dead center, which is nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at a sweep uh, for the 70 centimeter band. So again, I click on sweep settings and then I come over here to my sweep settings dialog box and this time I'll pick 70 centimeters, set my band sweep, exit out, and then I'll click the sweep button. And again, I can see where I fall on that particular band from an SWR, from return loss, and then I can come down here and see where I am on the Smith chart. So folks, that's pretty much going to cover it for this video. Uh, what I wanted to do is set out to give an introduction of this particular software and some basic instructions on how to use it, and then give you enough information to get you off and started and doing some analysis on your own antennas. Anyway, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Once again, thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate it.